Hey guys, it's Tamara K. Anderson. Are you feeling pretty worn out dealing with the many stressors in your life? Might I recommend Daily Essential Nutrients by Hardy Nutritionals? These amazing micronutrient vitamins have helped my family with anxiety, depression, ADHD, and even autism. I highly recommend you check them out at gethardy.com. I, I don't know. I was super crazy, super anxious all the time. I couldn't sleep. I wouldn't let my husband sleep. I thought I would die if I fell asleep. Totally irrational. And so finally, I have the baby. I had to have a C-section. But as soon as he came out, they pumped me full of all the, all the drugs, all mm -hmm. the anxiety stuff, antidepressants and everything. And they said, this is just going to be for a little while and then you can go off. Well, it ended up being 12 years. Welcome to Stories of Hope in Hard Times, the show that explores how people endure and even thrive in difficult times, all with God's help. I'm your host, Tamara K. Anderson. Join me on a journey to find inspiring stories of hope and wisdom learned in life's hardest moments. My next guest is a manifesting coach, international speaker, podcaster, and cruise retreat host. She is originally from Dallas, Texas, and she spent her school years in Kansas. Now she lives in Spanish Fork, Utah, with her husband and teenage son. She loves to help unlock the potential of women entrepreneurs who know they are meant for big things, but have been stuck playing small. She helps them tap into their purpose, take control of their inner chatter, build themselves in their tribe, and change the world on a bigger scale. I am pleased to present Kelly Walker, the manifesting queen. <laughs> Kelly, are you ready to share your story of hope? Yes, I'm so ready. Thank you. Oh, I'm so excited for this. So <laughs> I thought we'd start with a fun story. And I would love to hear you tell me how you became a speaker <laughs> by hiding in the bathroom. <laughs> okay, I will tell you that story. So I had decided that I was going to be a motivational speaker shortly after going to my first motivational seminar, right? My right. first personal development seminar. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's, that's what I need to do. I was a graphic designer at the time. I'd just been fired. And I was like, hmm, new career. Yes, I think so. That's what I want to do. So I decided that I would just be on the lookout for speaker training programs, any, anything I could find. And I started saying it out loud every day. So I started manifesting it. Mm -hmm. So every day I declared, I'm a motivational speaker and I change lives from the stage. And I said that every single day. I wow. had never spoken before. I had no speaker training. I didn't have any idea what I was doing or how I would get there, but I started saying it every day. So I soon after saw the event on Facebook that was, it's like a cross between a TED Talk and America's Got Talent. So Ooh. they have four contestants each month. They go up and they speak for 10 minutes. And then there's a, a panel of judges and they give them feedback, which I read as free speaker coaching. Oh. So, <laughs> right? You're awesome. I love I that. Know. So I bought a ticket and I went. I didn't sign up. I just, you know, it wasn't to sign up for this event. It was a come watch this event thing. Mm. So I bought a ticket and I showed up and, and I was totally overwhelmed by how awesome it was and the the feedback from the coaches uh the judges was amazing and i loved it and when it was over the mc got up and he said we've got one spot open for a contestant next month and i was like oh, no 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 i'm not ready yet but i have to take it like i knew like like something like made me stand up and start walking over there to sign up and I was so scared and I found myself suddenly walking out the building and I like turned around and I was like, um, what just happened? <laughs> Apparently, the terror took over my legs and changed directions for me. 
So that was like really surreal because my body literally took over and walked me towards the exit. But there was a bathroom right at the exit door. And so I ran into the bathroom. I went in. I sat on the a toilet. I shut the little stall door. And I sat there and argued with myself while hiding in the bathroom. And, you know, I had the brave side and the scared side. You know, Kelly, what are you doing? I don't know. Go sign up for that spot. I can't. I'm too scared. Mm-hmm. It's okay. They're all, they're going to all be scared. I can't. I'm too new at this. That's okay. They're all new at this. Mm-hmm. Finally, after I think I sat in there at least 10 minutes arguing and hiding. And so my brave self won and I got up and I walked out of the bathroom and I went up to the guy. He was still there. I was kind of hoping everybody had left, but they hadn't. So I went up to the guy with the clipboard and I said, hey, is that spot still open? And he looked at me kind of funny and he said, did you forget something? I thought I saw you leave. (laughs) In my head, I went, yeah, I forgot I'm a motivational speaker. (laughs) (laughs) I said, no, I just came back to sign up for that spot if it's still open. And he said, well, it is. Would you like it? And I said, yes. And then I burst into hysterical tears of terror. (laughs) And um, I think I really concerned him and scared him. (laughs) He let me sign up. And I was so scared. I'm pretty sure he thought he'd never see me again. Mm. But I went back and I ended up winning the contest. Oh, my gosh. I know. And I kind of took that as a sign. I was on the right path. And I've, I've spoken about... Wow, like over 150 times since then. And that was December 2017. So almost two years now. Wow, look at how far you've come. I know. (laughs) It's awesome. (laughs) All from hiding in the bathroom. All from hiding in the bathroom. Well, we're going to go back even farther than two years to dive into your story. So Mm -hmm. we're going to go back about 15 years. Yeah. And why don't you take us to that point and explain you where you were at that point in your life? Well, I was, let's see, how old was I then? I was like 38, I think, 38 years old. I'd never had a baby yet. You know, I go to church every Sunday with all these moms with little babies and I, we'd just come home crying every day. We'd have to leave early because I'd be hysterical finally finally we did fertility treatments we did all kinds of stuff finally I quit my job and I went to Mexico and I got pregnant (sighs) lack of stress Mm -hmm. is what did it I think Mm -hmm. because I quit thinking about it Mm -hmm. um so I was so happy and then the pregnancy took a turn for the worst um I got toxemia I had to go on bed rest at week 26 they said they were taking him Oh. And they pumped me full of that steroid thing that develops their lungs. And um, I just prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and got a blessing. And I was like, please do not let him come out yet. He's not ready. This can't happen yet. And um, so he ended up, I ended up stabilizing enough that they could leave him in. So he got to stay in until week 38. But I had to stay in the hospital and then I had to stay on complete 100% bed rest. And that was super, super horrible for me. And I had claustrophobia really bad. And so as he grew into my lung space, and I couldn't breathe, Mm -hmm. I started to have panic attacks. Oh, And yeah, by the end of month six, I was in a 24 hour panic attack. So I was just bonkers crazy. Like, I don't even know, my poor husband, I don't know how he survived the Mm -hmm. first (laughs) <laughs> the end of the pregnancy and the first six months of having a baby. I don't know how he survived me, but I was completely off. I, I don't know. I was super crazy, super um, anxious all the time. I couldn't sleep. I wouldn't let my husband sleep. I thought I would die if I fell asleep. Um, totally irrational. And so finally I have the baby. Um, I had to have a C-section because I, I had a tumor covering the, uh, the exit So he couldn't get out. So um, it was just a fibroid tumor. Like it wasn't a dangerous tumor, but it grew to the size of a football. So he couldn't get out there. There there was no way he could get around it. So then I had to have a C-section. But as soon as he came out, they pumped me full of all the, all the drugs, all Mm -hmm. the anxiety stuff, antidepressants and everything. 
And they said, this is just going to be for a little while and then you can go off of it. Well, it ended up being 12 years before. Yeah. And I would try to go off them and I'd go crazy again. And so I couldn't do it. And I'd have anxiety attacks where I couldn't breathe. Like I would literally stop breathing and I was sure I was going to die. And I got super irritable. I, it was, I was unlivable with, (laughs) Uh. so I always had to go back on them. And then I just became so numb and such a zombie. I didn't, I didn't care about anything. I just wanted to stay up all night playing this video game that I escaped into. It was this whole world, Mm. you know, and I would go play this all night long and I'd try to sleep as much as I could all day. Um, I'd go to work and not do my job and got fired. Of course I got fired. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so then I found myself at home with, you know, my son was at school. My husband was at work. I was all by myself and I totally hit rock bottom. And, you know, I was suicidal. I was non-functioning. I never got dressed. I never got out of bed. And I was literally at rock bottom. And then I got this uh, email, a random email from somebody that had given my son a craniosacral massage like two years earlier. And I somehow had gotten on her email list. Thank goodness. Mm. (laughs) And so the email said that she had some extra tickets from a friend that wanted to sell them to some seminar I'd never heard of. And, you know, it was all about personal development. And it was three days long. And I was like, well, I don't have a job, so scheduling's not a problem. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'd have to get dressed, though. I hadn't gotten dressed in a week. <laughs> but I, I felt like I needed to go, even though I'd never heard of, I didn't know anything about personal development or anything. So I got dressed that day, and I went up to Salt Lake, to the Salt Palace, and I walked into this room, and have you ever walked in a room where the energy is so strong, it like knocks you back a couple of steps Mm -hmm. it was like that I walked in and I just I just kind of fell backwards a little bit because the the positive energy was so strong it was physically overwhelming to me and I thought whoa this is new (laughs) (laughs) this is new and different so uh, I went in and I I sat down and I was a little scared but it ended up you know literally being a life-changing seminar for me literally changed my life and it it pulled me out of my depression and funk enough that I started going to more seminars and pretty soon I was going to one every month and then pretty soon I was getting trained to be a speaker and then pretty soon I was getting trained to be a life coach and then pretty soon I had a client and I was speaking places and it just it just snowballed from there. And so it was a huge transformation in a very, very short time. I know that it was meant to be, it was a gift from God. It was a here, here, you need to go this way now, because that way's not working anymore kind of thing. And it was amazing. And still, I still every day, I'm just amazed at how, how much a person can change in such a short amount of time. Hmm. which you know which I've done and so I know it's possible and so now I help other people do it wow so from video games and totally (laughs) depressed to Uh life coach and motivational speaker that is so so dramatic (laughs) I know. oh my goodness so let me just Um, ask you really quickly how did you feel about God when you were in your pit Oh, I, I ignored the whole God thing completely because, you know, I wanted to be, I was in my little miserable pit and I was, you know, I kind of grew up being taught that you've got to figure stuff out on your own. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't ask people for help. You don't go to others when you're hurting, you just deal with it. You just suck it up, you know, suck it up Mm -hmm. and get over it. And I started to internalize that so much that I didn't even turn to God anymore. I just shut everybody out. I shut out my husband. I shut out God. I shut out everything. And I was just like, 
you know, simmering in my, in my little pit, it's all by myself trying mm-hmm. to figure it out or, or exit, you know, on my mm-hmm. own. I didn't need any help. <laughs> <laughs> I needed so right? much help. <laughs> False. <laughs> so I guess the lesson learned is even though you had shut God out, he had not forgotten about you. Right. Cause he made sure I got that email. Mm-hmm. That random well, email. And you made the choice to act on it. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Thank, thank goodness I did. <gasps> yeah. Cause I felt something, something was different about it. You know, i I felt very drawn to do it, even though it seemed like a crazy idea. And something totally foreign and weird. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Oh it my was goodness. A really good decision. Yeah. So, what lessons would you say you learned from this hard time in your life? Probably the number one is that what you focus on grows. Mm-hmm. And that's so simple, but it, I don't think people realize the magnitude of that sentence. Whatever you think about, you make happen more often. So I was totally focused on how miserable I was. I was focused on how much I missed my coworkers and I was so lonely and sad. I was focused on how much I hated everything and how angry I was and how lost I was and so because that's what I focused on that's what I attracted that's what grew and -hmm. that's what I got more and more of Mm. so how are you able to break that cycle then (laughs) it's funny I I my first keynote presentation was on how to break that cycle oh really yeah it's not anymore I've moved on but um it's super easy it's maybe not so easy to do but it's so easy and simple the first thing I did was every morning I would wake up and I would ask God, who can I serve today? Mm-hmm. And whatever name came to mind, I made sure I could serve them somehow. And sometimes I would get, you need to go out and find the person because I'm not going to tell you. It's, it's going to be a surprise. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> and so that was number one. Number two was I started writing seven things every day on Facebook. So I had to be accountable because I told everybody I would do it. Seven things every day I was grateful for. Mm. And I started a vision board. Mm. Those three things, that's what I did. The first one was ask God every day for someone to serve because it got the focus off of my problems. Mm -hmm. And it made me think of other people instead of, oh, woe is me. Wow. And then the gratitude totally helped. Oh, yeah. It totally does. And the vision board. I actually have one and it has helped me and I do love it. But why don't you describe, would you mind describing two things for me really quick? Yeah. You are known as the queen of manifesting. (laughs) So describe what manifesting is really quick and then Mm. tell me, describe what a vision board is for people who don't know what that is. Okay. Which one first? Do the manifesting first. Okay. Manifesting to me, I have a six step formula that I, that I have worked out. So the first step is figure out what you want. So pick a goal, but get really specific because most people can't get specific. They're mm-hmm. super vague on what they want. So number one, get clear on what you want. Number two is visualize it. See it happening with gratitude. Feel the feelings you're going to have when it happens. Get really involved in that image in your mind. Number three is to declare it out loud. Say it out loud every day. Like I did, I am a motivational speaker and I change lives from the stage. I said that with absolutely zero training or possibility or anything. So it works when you say it out loud. And then fourth is to clear your mind and ask God, what's my next step in reaching this? Because there there is an elaborate path to your goal and you cannot see it all at once. God will show you your next step if you ask him. If you say, here's my goal, here's what I want, what's my next step today? Mm. And then receive the answer. Because a lot of people, they ask, and then they go off and do stuff. Or they 
you know, they get distracted, they forget. <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that happen. And so you ask for God to tell you your next step and then you don't listen for it. Mm -hmm. So make sure you listen for it, get the next step. And then number six, get up and do it immediately. If you can, if you can't take, take a note, like keep a notebook or something of your next steps. And before you go to bed, make sure you do it. Don't go to bed until it's done. But you know, sometimes you can't do it right when you get it. But basically that's it. Decide what you want. Ask God how to do it. Take the step. That is awesome. In a nutshell. Thanks. And do you implement any of these things onto a vision board? <laughs> My vision board is where I put all the things I have gotten clear on that I want. Oh. Yeah. Tell me so about that. Mine, um, mine has uh, like, oh. So this weekend I reached 10,000 downloads on my podcast. <gasps> Congratulations. Thank you. That's been on my vision board for about three months. Wow. So that's one of the things that I look at every night before I go to bed. I look at it and I, and I just envision it happening. And I, I have nine things on my board. Uh -huh. And so you look at it before you go to bed. And when you get up and you just imagine them happening, feel the feelings you're going to get. And then go on with your day or go to bed and let your brain think about it while you sleep. So I have lots of things on there. Um, I have make my first TV show episode. Because <gasps> I'm, I'm going to, I'm creating a TV show called Manifesting Makeovers. Um, so like I'll teach somebody how to manifest something they haven't been able to manifest so far. Like we'll do declarations. We'll do belief breakthrough on why they don't let themselves have it. And then we'll come back like the last two minutes will be a follow-up from them like six months later or something. Oh my so gosh. That's on my vision board to get my first episode done. Um, my March cruise sold out. That's on my vision board. So just fun things that I would like to happen. That is awesome. Do you do pictures or do you do statements? I do a little bit of both. I mix, I mix, I mix some pictures in there, but I do have a statement for each one. I don't okay. have a picture for all, but I have a statement for each one of them. That is awesome. Oh, mm -hmm. beautiful. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, so you've given us some amazing tips here and I want to learn more from you. So before we go any farther, we're going to take a quick break. But when we get back, would you mind telling us some tips that you would give to someone who is in a similar situation like you lost discouraged and broken mm -hmm. and how to pull yes. out totally hey guys this is Tamara k anderson when my daughter was eight years old our family moved clear across the country and this experience was a bit traumatic for my daughter Within the next year, we saw her go from happy and vibrant to a child riddled with anxiety. And we couldn't even find a counselor that would talk to her because she was too young. At that point of desperation, I called a friend of mine who had had tremendous success with her son taking some micronutrient vitamins, which helped him pull out of childhood depression. I thought if they could do that for him, surely they could help my daughter with her anxiety. We started her on these amazing vitamins and lo and behold, between that and an anxiety program I found online, she was able to come out of this shell that she had become and find her way back to being her normal, happy self. I'm a firm believer now that if your body gets the right nutrients, it can heal itself. And so I too have been taking daily essential nutrients from Hardy Nutritionals along with my other children to help with autism, ADHD, anxiety, and depression. These vitamins have been lifesavers for my family. If you too are struggling and need to get a powerful multivitamin for you or your family, I'm happy to recommend Daily Essential Nutrients by Hardy Nutritionals. And as a bonus, my listeners get a 10% discount when they order with the code HOPE10. That's H-O-P-E-10, the number 10, one zero. So go to gethardy.com and order Daily Essential Nutrients today. And we're back. 
I am talking to Kelly Walker about how she was able to change her life from being a video gamer to the queen of manifesting. (laughs) So Kelly, let's talk a little bit about um, what advice you give to people who are in a similar situation where they feel stuck and broken and lost in their life. Um, how would you teach them to, for example, write a manifesto? What would okay, that well, look like? So the number one thing is to, for them to realize that what they're thinking and saying is creating what they have and what they're experiencing. So yeah, a manifesto is the number one thing I get people into because once they start speaking differently about their life, they start getting different results in their life. Mm. So the manifesto process, um, it's actually, it's not very hard. Some people have a hard time deciding what they want, and that's probably what keeps them from doing it. Um, so that's probably the only obstacle most people have. I teach people the, the manifesting formula, number three, declaration, that that's the manifesto. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I have them first write a power statement that says who they are, why they're here, what their mission is, you know, anything that gets them feeling awesome and epic and unstoppable and invincible. And then after they have their power statement, I have them start out with, if they've got one specific thing they want to manifest, I have them just do it for that one thing. So like last week I was speaking in Kansas and I did a workshop on manifesting clients. Mm -hmm. So I helped them all just write a manifesto only about their business and how they manifest clients, how they work with them, what results they get them, how they feel about working with them, you know, just Mm -hmm. everything relating to that. But if you're doing a general manifesto for your life, then I would do the four areas. So health, finances, relationship with yourself and relationship with others. And others is the biggest one. So that's like with your family, with your higher power, with other people in the world, kind of like, um, you know, like the five kingdoms. So Mm -hmm. all those different relationships. Right. So that's usually the longest section. And then wrap it up with a gratitude statement about, you know, how grateful you are to be on the earth or to be doing what you're doing or just whatever the things that you have. And then read it every day. And I have all kinds of tips on reading it, you know, like um, read it in the morning when you first get up, read it again before you go to bed. Mm. Your subconscious mind doesn't sleep and it gets bored. (laughs) <laughs> if you read your manifesto and look at your vision board before you go to sleep and say, okay, get to work, it will come up with solutions while you sleep and it will be very happy with you. <laughs> you know, I've actually had that happen before. I remember somebody taught me this concept and, and like giving your subconscious something to think about and solve yes. at night. And it's kind of crazy when you wake up the next morning and sometimes you wake up early, like at 4 AM and you've got this idea and you're like, that's it. So you, you almost have to get up and like write it down. So you don't forget. Um, Keep a notepad by your bed. I know. (laughs) Very important. But it's crazy that it works. I know. It's so awesome. I love it. That is so freaking amazing. Wow. So write your manifesto. Would you mind sharing with us your manifesto? Yeah, it, mine's really long. Can I just read you my first paragraph? Yes, that would be Actually, awesome. I usually play really epic music at the same time. So imagine really epic music playing in the background. Okay, Love it, yes. My name is Kelly K. Walker, and I am a force of nature. I am divine, determined, and diligent, a valiant daughter of God and a queen in the making. I am a warrior of light, and I shine brighter every day, lighting the world more powerfully and irresistibly everywhere I go. As my influence spreads across the nation and the world, I find, inspire, and encourage other world changers to also stand up, be seen, and live their purpose at a higher level. 
Together, we are creating a huge ripple effect of love, light, and hope that reaches every corner of this world. Ooh, I <gasps> love that. I that is too. awesome. And it's I happening, too. right? It is happening. <laughs> totally happening. Oh my goodness. That is yeah, awesome. So you, you teach people to write their manifesto, to envision it. What other, are there any other tips that you would say to somebody who is stuck in their pit? Um, wow. Watch your language because literally everything you say, you bring to pass in your thoughts and your words. So look for the positive, focus on the positive, do a gratitude list every day. Oh my gosh, that will change your life. Mm-hmm. When you shift your thinking from what am I grateful for instead of why don't I have what I want? Mm. It is so powerful because yeah. you see, because you, what you focus on grows, you see more and more things to be grateful for. Mm-hmm. It's like exponential. <laughs> it's amazing. So gratitude, add daily gratitude. That's the number one. And it's the easiest most simple, just get a little notepad and write down. I like seven, start with seven things a day. And you know what it could be? It could be if you're, if it's hard for you, you're thankful that you live inside. (laughs) Right. You're you're thankful for air conditioning. You're thankful that you have clothes to wear. You're -hmm. thankful for running water. I mean, you can get really basic if you're not feeling it, but Mm -hmm. as you go, your gratitude will get deeper and deeper. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. Wonderful. So what resources would you recommend? Obviously people are going to write their manifesto, but what resources would you recommend for people as they're starting on this journey? Mm -hmm. Um, One of my favorite books that I've read is called The Power of the Subconscious Mind. Mm -hmm. And it's actually, you can find it on YouTube where people have read it out loud and you don't even have to buy it. Oh, wow. Um, but if you want to make notes, like go to Amazon and order it and, and take notes in it and stuff. But it's really amazing. It's all about the science behind it and, you know, how it works and things people have created by changing their thoughts and mm. retraining their subconscious mind. Also, if you go to my website, I have a lot of free resources on there. I have a free ebook, which is uh, five easy ways to get more of what you want. Ooh. And that's, that's a fun one. Um, I also have a Facebook group where I do a free class every Monday morning on manifesting. And I pick a topic every month. Everybody's favorite topic seems to be money. And so I do it (laughs) twice. I know. I do that one twice a year. So I do, I do it in January and then again in the summer where we do a whole month of just manifesting money because people really like manifesting money. Um, also, I do a health one. Um, around the holidays, I do a how to deal with difficult people month and <laughs> how to stay out of trigger, how to stay happy around people that trigger you. Um, right now, I'm doing imposter syndrome this month. Mm-hmm. So February, I do how to manifest love and better relationships. <laughs> oh, that for, that fits February, right? <laughs> You're right. Yeah. So I have fun with it. I just i I have a thing where when you join my group, it asks you, "What do you want to manifest?" And that's how I decide what to do for the free classes on, oh. because the people literally tell me, "Well, here's the things I need to work on." So mm-hmm. that's how I pick the topics. So what is your Facebook group called? We are masters of manifesting. Okay, wonderful. We'll put a link to that in the show notes for sure. And awesome. what is your website? What is your website called? It's the queen of manifesting.com. Wonderful. Make sure you put in the 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 queen of manifesting. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. And I love that you have this free class that you share every month. That is awesome. Every Monday. Every Monday. Every, every Monday. Oh, every Monday. Every week. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. Thank you. Now, you started a podcast not long ago. Actually, a I couple did. years ago, right? In December. In December. In December. Yeah. Wonderful. Tell us about your podcast. 
Well, it's called the Queen of Manifesting, obviously. Mm -hmm. And um, I just pick topics related to manifesting. Um, Usually it has, it correlates with my Monday morning manifesting. They're usually Mm -hmm. similar. But also, like, I don't know, maybe the first 20 episodes, I just do the basics, all the all the aspects of manifesting. So how to write a manifesto, why it works, the science behind it, the bundle of nerves in your brain that lets you manifest, the law of attraction, why it works, you know, how to make it not work, you know, all kinds <laughs> of things, the bouncer in your brain. So it's really informative. I'm super into the science behind things and why things work um, because I'm a big skeptic mm. about stuff. And so I, when I first learned about manifesting, I was like, oh, that's a lot of hooey. But, <laughs> but then I was like, well, maybe it's not. I should look into it. But I read The Secret and I tried manifesting after reading The Secret and it didn't work. And so for a long time, I thought it was just, you know, made up junk. And then when I started going to the seminars, the people on the stage were talking about manifesting. And I was like, well, maybe there's something to it. Maybe I did it wrong. Mm. And so I started studying it. And yeah, I completely did it wrong, of Mm. course. So I figured out how to actually make it work. I started using it on myself. And then then I can legitimately say, yeah, this is a real thing. Here's the science behind it. Here's why it works. And, you know, here's how to make it not work. Here's mm-hmm. how to troubleshoot. When, when these things are happening, I have a whole list of like, if this is happening, here's what you need to do. If this is happening, here's what you need to do. I have a whole troubleshooting thing. So, And is that on your website as well? Um, or is that on your podcast? Yes, probably. Yeah, I don't have a, it's in my course. I have an online course. Oh, um, tell us about that. Manifesting course. Okay. it's. It's how to write a manifesto. Like that's my first one. And at the end, there's the whole troubleshooting sections at the end. Um, You can order. I actually have a workbook. It's a 27 page workbook and it comes with a 90 minute webinar and it's called the ultimate manifesting workbook. Wow. There you have it. That's all you need. You need the ultimate. (laughs) (laughs) It's everything from beginning to end with all the troubleshooting and a webinar to watch to go with it. So that's, that's been really helpful. People have really liked that. That is awesome. And that's on your website as well. It is. I should, I could, I think the link is on the first page. That is so freaking awesome. And is that, is that where you also include an outline of how to manifest then? Um, The six steps to manifesting are probably on there. They're definitely in that course. Okay. And they're in my group. If you go to We Are Masters of Manifesting, awesome. it's also, it's posted in there. Awesome. And if you want them, I can give them to you and you can put them in the show notes. Oh, that would be great. The steps to manifesting. I would love that. Okay, I would awesome. love that. We'll, we'll, we'll share that with my, my audience. That would be awesome. Yes. So let me ask you kind of as a follow-up. Mm-hmm. How would you say your relationship with God is right now compared oh to where gosh. you were down it's in your so pit? Different. <laughs> it's so different. So I was not, I was talking to God zero, like 0% of the time. I wasn't praying or anything. And now it's like all day long, like, okay, God, what do I do now? What, you know, wh- where is this step taking me? What do I, I've done my step. What do I do now? Mm-hmm. Um, I read scriptures every morning and again, I had, I had stopped that. Um, I made it part of my AM and PM routine. So I have to check a box every day, mm-hmm. whether I've read my scriptures each day. Um, and my six step manifesting formula, I do that literally every morning. I do that myself. And so I am literally asking God every day, what's my step next step now? in prayer. And then I just wait until I get an answer. So we talk a lot more now. (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) And so your relationship with God is better. Your relationship with your family's better. It sounds. Yeah. Oh, way better. (laughs) So much better. 
So much better. Now my problem is that I travel to speak too often. Oh. So I, now I have a new higher level problem. Mm. I guess you'll have to take that to God too, right? <laughs> yeah. Just bring them with me. There you go. Let's go. We're going to speak. I'm going to London to speak next month, but <gasps> I'm oh, not taking them. Yay. I know. My husband too bad, it, right? I know. He's so sad. <laughs> awesome. I do have a new um, free ebook that I just <gasps> made. Tell us about it. Which, okay, I will. It is called uh, The Guide to Manifest Anything. And it just it's an in-depth book on the six steps to manifesting. It's just more in-depth. And it's not where do super we, long, but... Where do we find your book? That? That is a, that's a good question. So far, I have just emailed it to people that wanted it. Oh, okay. And how would people contact you if they wanted a copy of that? Um, my email is kelly at the queen of manifesting.com. Kelly is K E L L Y. Awesome. That okay. would probably be easy. Yeah. That's super awesome. Well, you have been so amazing and generous in teaching us today about how to change your life and that it is mm-hmm. possible. No, totally. And it starts with changing that inner dialogue. Yeah. Um, opening a conversation with God or your higher power and, and beginning to believe that your life can and will be different. Yeah. That is awesome. Whatever you believe is true. Whatever you believe is true. So (laughs) my friends, we are so thankful for you sharing all of this amazing information to us. Thank you for teaching us how to manifest All of the links that we've discussed today will be in the show notes. And thank you, Kelly, for sharing this amazing amount of knowledge and experience (laughs) with us today. It's been awesome. Thank you. You're awesome. Thanks for having (laughs) me on. Today's podcast was sponsored by Daily Essential Nutrients by Hardy Nutritionals. Go check them out at Get hardy.com to see how micronutrient vitamins can help you like they've helped me and my family. Also, don't forget to use the code HOPE10 to get a 10% discount available specifically for my listeners. That's gethardy.com. Hey, thanks so much for listening to today's show. I know that there are many of you out there that are going through a hard time and I hope you found things that have been useful today as you listen to the podcast. If you would like to access the show notes from today's podcast, visit my website. It is storiesofhopepodcast.com. That is where you'll find favorite quotes from today's episode and shareable memes. And those are fun because you can share them with your friends on social media. You will also find the links mentioned throughout today's episode so you don't have to remember what those were and also all the tips that were shared. Sometimes tips are shared so much throughout an episode you forget what were those great things. So go to the show notes storiesofhopepodcast.com to look up these fantastic resources. You know if someone kept coming to mind during today's episode perhaps that means that you should share this with them. Maybe there was a story shared or a tip that they really, really need to hear. So go ahead and share this episode with them. May God bless you, especially if you are struggling with hope to carry on and with the strength to keep going when things get tough. Remember to walk with Christ and he will help bear that burden. Above all else, Remember, God loves you.